All right, great. Welcome everyone. Thanks for joining. Uh, my name is Jessica Reino. I am a clinical social worker and I'm the associate clinical director at My Dear. Today, we are going to talk about anger. We are going to like really dive deep into this emotion, how to understand it, what it means, where it comes from, and also some activities to help your child do those same things. Um, I'm going to show you a number of like strategies and games that we've made that you can use at home with your child. Um, we're also going to talk about managing anger and how to do that and what that looks like. So before we even get to the agenda, I want to level set around anger. So if you are here, it is probably because your child is struggling with anger in some way, right? But we all feel angry. We know this. This is an obvious statement, right? We all feel angry from time to time. Maybe you felt angry today already, right? We all feel this emotion. It is a normal emotion. It is a useful emotion. It has a purpose. If you think of the last situation that made you angry, think of what that was, right? Like maybe you felt misunderstood. Maybe someone misrepresented you. Uh, maybe you were interrupted. Maybe someone ignored, you felt ignored. Some You feel like someone ignored you or you feel like you were wrongly blamed for something. There could be a number of reasons why we feel angry. And when you think about them, like they are good, legitimate reasons, right? Probably like, yeah, of course I was angry <laughs> about that thing. Um, so anger is a natural emotion. It is a normal emotion. It's an important emotion. It's also an instinctual and protective emotion. So anger is oftentimes our body's response to some interpretation of threat. And threat could mean various things. Like threat could mean like we're actually in danger. We feel like someone in our family, someone we love, we care about is in danger. It could feel like, you know, physical threat. It also could be a threat to our ego, how we think about ourselves, how we feel about ourselves, a threat to like beliefs we have, things that we think are important, our sense of right and wrong. So we could have this like instinctual reaction of anger for a variety of reasons. Um, I think anger is a really good communi communication tool in a way if we, if we listen to it. So what is anger telling us about ourselves? What is anger telling us the things we care about? What is anger telling us about our insecurities? What is anger telling us about our hopes and our expectations? Um, and then anger has a job to do. So if we get back to like anger's protective function, Think of like how your body feels when you're angry. It, you probably feel motivated. You feel energetic. You feel like possibly like really focused um, and like empowered in some way, right? So like anger has a lot of like useful, important qualities and anger can also feel bad, right? Sometimes anger is not a good feeling. We don't want to feel angry. Sometimes we feel stuck in anger. Sometimes anger feels out of our control or actually it can be out of our control. And sometimes anger feels like overwhelming or overpowering. And anger can lead us to act in ways that we regret and say things we don't mean and do things that have consequences, right? Do things that hurt other people, say things that hurt other people or do things that like have real consequences for us or for someone else, right? So I want to go through all that because Anger as the emotion is not the full story of why we're here today, right? We're here because we're talking about the frequency of anger. We're talking about the intensity of anger and we're talking about what happens when we feel angry, right? So then we're not talking about the emotion necessarily. We're talking about reactions. We're talking about behaviors. So that is where we're going to start. So I want to first separate out the emotion from the thought, from the behavior, understand the differences and the connection between them. This is going to be really important in terms of like interventions and how we change intensity of our emotions or how we help ourselves feel better, feel differently. We're going to look at a model of psychosocial development. So like really getting at like where one, I, one model for where anger can come from and why we might feel angry at certain points and for, for certain reasons. We're going to separate out like emotional awareness the skill, the practice of emotional awareness from emotional response, the thing that happens in our bodies and in our brain when we're experiencing intense emotion. And then how do we even get to emotional regulation? How do we even get to like managing that emotion and the reaction we're having to the emotion? And we're gonna, I'm gonna go through the activities that you're gonna get. 
And then I'll give you like a few things to keep in mind for, for the actual moments when your child's feeling angry and like some things you can think about and try to help them with in those moments. So let's start with the difference here between emotions, thoughts, behaviors, and body response. So if you look at this, I'm going to call it an equation, like, and you think back to like the thing that made you angry most recently, right? Anger is the emotion you are feeling. Now that is different from like the thoughts that were going through your head when you're angry, right? When you're angry, when you're angry in general, you're probably thinking probably fairly like pessimistically or negatively. You might be really focused on the thing that's making you angry. You have, might have a hard time like shifting your attention away from the thing that's making you angry or the person who's making you angry. Um, your body has a response in this moment. Usually like your heart rate is up. You might feel like heat in your face or like in your neck. Your muscles are probably tense. If you pay attention to like, like your shoulders, your neck, your fists, like some tension in your body. Because remember, your body's kind of preparing to react you know, in a lot of these situations. Um, and then there's a behavior that can come from anger, right? A behavioral reaction. And so this looks different for all of us. This might be shutting down. This might be some sort of like physical aggression. This might be verbal aggression, yelling. It might be different for everyone, right? We can insert any emotion into this equation. Like think about a time that you are like really excited about something, right? Your thoughts are probably really hopeful, positive. Your thoughts actually might be spiraling a little bit. They might be like kind of grandiose. Um, body response, probably your heart rate's high. You're feeling a lot of energy. And behaviorally, you're probably moving around a lot. You might be really talkative, um, right? So you can insert any emotion into this equation and see how all the pieces are connected. And they also influence one another. And the reason that this is really important to understand is because when it comes to like, we feel angry and we don't want to feel angry anymore, right? Or we feel intensely angry and we want to feel less intensely angry. We want to like gain our control back over that emotion, right? We don't want it like overpowering us. We don't have direct access to change our emotions, right? If I were to say, don't feel angry, feel happy right now, calm down right now. Like you can't just like flip a switch and change how you feel. You can't just change your emotion, but you can work with thoughts, work with behaviors and work with those body responses as like intervention points. Um, and so that's like the real key thing. Like if you think of like coping skills, what are like thought-based coping skills? What are body-based coping skills, right? My heart is racing. How can I take deep breaths to help slow my heart rate down? I feel muscle tension in my body. Okay. Can I do progressive muscle relaxation? And will that help my body feel calmer? And then I will feel less intensely angry, right? Um, behavioral interventions, right? We, I feel like hitting, I'm so angry. I feel like hitting, but like, what if I go for a walk instead? What if I like have some other behavioral outlet? Um, thoughts. Can I challenge my thoughts? Can I work with the assumptions I'm making and challenge those and try to reframe those? And will that influence how I'm feeling in the moment, the emotional state I'm in, or like the intensity of that? So those are really our intervention points. Um, so today, we are going to focus mostly on how I can understand my emotions. So this is this is not the intervention of how to change my emotions, right? We're going to focus on like, I'm going to use the word honoring anger a little bit, but like we're going to focus on like where it comes from and how to understand it and how to help kids understand it because it's a pretty complicated emotion that's doing a lot of things. Um, also in this, we're going to talk a little bit about how I can use my behaviors to change how I feel, how I can use my thoughts to change how I feel, and how I can change my body response to change how I feel, right? What are those coping skills that I can use and um, to help myself feel better? So first, we're going to start with understanding anger and where it comes from, right? We're not at coping skills right now. We are understanding anger um, and like kind of like the root the root of it in a way. Um, so this is one model of, model of psychosocial development. This is off of Eric Erickson's model. Um, so basically the way this works is that at every stage in our lives, we have these like key skills we are developing and these like questions we're trying to answer. 
And a lot of this is adding up to, that's what's in the yellow bubble. A lot of this is adding up to what's in the green bubble, which are like, how do I see myself? How do I understand myself? What is my self-image? What are my core beliefs about myself and about other people and about the world around me, right? And ideally, the things we need to figure out at each stage, it all goes well. And we like are able to kind of like do the experimentation we need to do. We're able to like learn the things we need to learn. And in that process, we develop like a healthy self-image and like healthy core beliefs. What we're gonna get to in the pink bubble eventually is sort of what happens when that is interrupted or what happens when we are getting, we get certain messages that sort of like challenge the way we want to feel or the lessons we learn and how those, we'll call them internal conflicts, like how those feel inside um, and what the emotions that they can lead to, the anger, the sadness, the anxiety that they can like lead to. So if we go th through this a little slowly, think of like when your child was in their first year of life, right? Like they don't have a specific question in their head, but like what they're learning is that like, can I trust others to care for me? Do others love me, right? Are their basic needs getting met? Are they held? Are they, are they loved? And what they're learning here is I'm lovable. I can trust my caregivers to take care of me. Um, like I am safe. They're learning like these core things, right? And you, for kids who don't have that, right? Who Kids, kids who like, don't have like those secure attachments really early on in life, you can see how what can happen is they like learn something else. They learn the world is not a safe place. I am unlovable. And if you think about how that would feel inside to have those core beliefs about yourself and about the world, like think of like the, the anxiety, the sadness, the anger that would be so easy to feel, right? If, if that is your core belief, right? I use that as the example because I think like understanding like, yes, all my child needs in this first year is like they need to feel loved. They need to feel cared for. They need to be cared for, right? It is my job to meet their needs. Um, and they they are learning a lot from that. Um, but let's jump to like early childhood. So really like your kids boundary testing, they're trying to, they're learning, right? They're experimenting. Like what happens when I do this? What happens when I say no to you? What happens when I walk this far away from you? What happens when I like, hit this thing against that thing, right? It's like a lot of experimentation and they're learning. They're learning about their impact, their power, their control on their environment. And that's it. Those are really important experiments basically for them to do. Um, and through that, they are like, they're learning like their sense of self in a lot of ways, right? What can happen in those early childhood years, right? If like the experimentation is met with, like, don't act that way. You shouldn't be acting that way. Like, acting that way is bad. Or they don't have that ch same chance to experiment. Like, kids can start getting these messages of, like, I am bad. My behaviors are bad. Like, my boundaries can't be trusted. Right? And it doesn't necessarily mean, like, that's, like, sticking and that's forever how they're going to see things. But, like, if you think of, like, a time when, and I, I can think of this for my own children, like, when I have, like, reacted to them negatively as they're doing this. And they're immediately angry, right? And it's because like, I'm interrupting that process for them of they're not trying to do anything wrong, right? Like they're just trying to figure things out. School age, um, a lot about are my interests valued or valid? Am I valuable? Am I good at things, right? And like, this gets tricky with like kids are in school a lot of times, right? Like they are having a lot of messaging, a lot of external influence about who they are getting placed on them from other kids, other adults now, right? And what's in really, really important here is like, we want it, we all want to feel good about ourselves, right? Like we want to feel like we are valuable. Um, like we are able to do things. We are competent. Um, we are safe. We are connected. We belong. We're lovable, right? We have a sense of purpose. And so in this stage, this the some of like that messaging that kids can get around like like you're not doing things right or you know there could be behavioral pieces here as well but also think academically of like you know getting that that internal sense of like I'm not good at this I'm not good at things like this is harder for me and why and that means I'm not good at things like that's hard for kids right and that can come up and look like anger a lot of times um so I'll skip over adolescence and adulthood 
um, adulthood though, for all of us, I think like a lot of it is about like relationships. Am I contributing to my family, my community, my society? Am I a good parent? And so like when that sense, that sense of self gets challenged, think of like that feeling, right? That we've all struggled with at times. So let's go through a little example of how this might look for a child. This is a made up child. Um, let's say his name is David, he's age nine. Uh, let's say David loves soccer, he's social, he's a smart kid, right? He's like typical kid. Um, David's not diagnosed with ADHD. He maybe has ADHD, but like no one knows it, right? No one's aware of maybe his needs. And he struggles with impulse control. He struggles with attentional control. He struggles with organization and planning and he struggles with emotional reactivity, right? He's a kid that feels things quickly and intensely. And when, how this, what this means for David is that when he forgets his homework, right? Because he struggles with like the organization and planning and he like might just forget that or he doesn't finish his assignment in class, right? Say he got distracted. He's told he's not trying hard enough. And like, we can look at this situation and like know that that's not about effort for David. Like he's not not trying hard enough. He's This is not about a choice he's making. He's not like not working hard enough. This is about like how his brain works. And this is about like his skill set. But what he is getting is the message that he's not trying hard enough. Another way this plays out, thinking more about behaviors is when David acts impulsively right? He gets super excited about something and talks out of turn, or he grabs someone's stuff and he's not thinking about it. He gets in trouble, right? So he's getting told like he's acting in the wrong way. So in those sorts of moments, what is David is sort of getting this messaging, like I'm not capable. I'm not smart. I make mistakes. I make people mad. I'm acting in the wrong way. Other, other kids, he's starting to compare himself to other kids as well. Other kids don't get in trouble like this. Other kids are better. Other kids are smarter than me, right? And if David is starting to interpret things that way. What does that mean internally for him? So like, what is that internal conflict? Because he doesn't want to feel that way about himself, right? And he doesn't want others to see him in that way. So that's a really hard emotion or really hard uh, like conflict to sit with. It really doesn't feel good. And some of the emotions that are really like bubbling out of that can be shame, can be anger, sadness, confusion, hurt, loneliness, embarrassment, like could be a bunch of stuff, right? But think of that like internal conflict, things like it really not setting well for him and it really not feeling good. All right, so we're gonna kind of go through that same idea first with like an adult friendly example. So imagine your in-laws accuse you of not providing some sort of adequate care for your kids. Uh, they should be, don't you think they should be wearing a coat right now? You're really going to let them eat that? Like whatever it might be. So the thought, like think back to that thought, emotion, behavior, or body response grid, the thought going through your head might be, they think I'm a bad parent, some variation of that. What is the internal conflict you're having in that moment? It's, I want to be a good parent. I think I'm a good parent and I want to be seen as a good parent, right? So like I'm mad at them, but also like this isn't sitting well with me that I'm being like misrepresented and like accused of something that I don't think is right. The emotion is probably some combination of like anger, annoyed, or embarrassed, confused, maybe shame, like there could be a bunch of things there. And then body response in that moment, you might have like increased heart rate, muscle tension, you might feel hot, like sick in your stomach. And then behaviors, behaviors could be different for each of us. It might be like shutting down, not talking to them, leaving the situation or telling them to leave, yelling or arguing, but more likely maybe screaming and venting about it later. Let's go through a kid friendly example. So David was having a great time at recess and he didn't realize he took someone's turn in four square. He just like, didn't notice. He was so excited to play, so pumped. He like grabbed the ball, jumped in front of someone in line just like didn't think of it. The other kids complain and the teacher says he can't play if he can't take turns. So like basically David has gotten accused of at being inconsiderate and like acting in the wrong way. So his thoughts are probably like, I didn't do that. Like he actually didn't realize he did that, right? I didn't do that. And they think I'm a bad kid. I'm interpreting the situation as they think I'm a bad kid. Um, 
internally for him. What is this like conflict that's brewing right now? It's, I don't want to be seen as inconsiderate. I don't want to act in ways I'm unaware of. And I don't want others thinking negatively about me, right? So like things aren't feeling good internally for him right now. So the emotions he's feeling are he's probably angry, confused, hurt, embarrassed. He might be feeling some sense of shame. And then kind of the same body responses that we were probably feeling, increased heart rate, muscle tension, heat, sick in his stomach. And behaviorally, he might like chuck the ball across the playground. He might storm off, leave the group. He might argue. He might go home and act irritably to his family, get in a fight with his sister later. So we can see how one, like the kind of like the chain reaction that happens um, between thoughts, emotions, behaviors, and body response, but also like this underlying piece of uh, like, what is our need? What do we want to believe and feel about ourselves? And like, what is this internal conflict that's happening in each of these little situations that isn't sitting right and like influences our emotional state? So now let's jump to like, okay, but why was it harder for David to stop his reaction? Like, why did we most likely in that situation hold it together, not yell at our in-laws and deal with it later, deal with our emotional state later. Whereas David probably like threw the ball, right? Like, why is there that difference? And so this is going to get at like the stop gap between the behavioral urge and the behavioral reaction. And that stop gap is executive functioning skills, um, like very specific skills that are required to stop you from acting in the way that like you're, you want to respond in that during that emotional state. So we're talking about emotional awareness, right? Like knowing how you feel, being aware of the urge, being aware of how, how your body feels, social awareness, knowing what is or isn't appropriate. We're talking about impulse control, right? The ability to like not act on the, the urge you're having. Utilization of like your working memory, meaning you can be in the moment of the actual situation feeling the way you feel and recall and pull on other information that's like relevant to helping you problem solve in this situation and cognitive flexibility. So like that ability to like shift your attention, think of other ways that this could be managed, right? So those are all skills that kids are still developing. Like they have not fully developed all those yet. So they're at a disadvantage from the start. Those are also skills that a number of kids are gonna have trouble with in the first place, right? A lot of kids, like these are just like brain-based skills, right? Like a lot of kids like are going to have trouble with these. And the other piece here is that these skills are less accessible to us when we are dysregulated, when we're emotionally dysregulated. And we're going to get to that on the next slide. Um, okay, so we're going to spend some time on this. We're going to talk about emotional awareness which is what a lot of the activities I'm going to share out are going to help with. We're going to talk about emotional response. So just some like, again, level setting around what's actually happening when we are feeling intense emotions. And then we'll get to like, okay, well, how do I even get to emotional regulation? Like, how do I help my kid then even manage their emotions? So before we dive into this, if you have a child who, when they are calm, can tell you, can talk to you about their emotions can tell you how they feel about things, right? Yes, like last week when I got upset about it, it was because I thought so-and-so was taking my stuff out to get me, whatever it is. And I know I shouldn't have acted in the way I did. And I next time I should go ask for help. I should go take a break. I should go do some deep breathing, whatever it is, right? If you have a child who, when they are calm, can think and talk through all that and they know all that, they have, emotion, they have emotional awareness, right? Like they're able to do all those things. And oftentimes that same child gets into the emotionally provocative situation, right? They are feeling intensely angry. They are feeling intensely anxious, whatever it is. And they have the same response, right? They Their body's having a reaction. Their brain is reacting to this and they have the same behavioral reaction, right? They can't access any of that emotional awareness and their coping skills in that moment, right? We see this a lot. And that is because what we're talking about is emotional regulation. And that is a skill that we need to build. So 
emotional regulation, I, I use this metaphor of like learning to ride a bike. If we were talking to, if we were trying to teach a child how to ride a bike, we would not just like look at the bike and talk about the bike and think about the bike and then expect that a child could get on the bike and just like ride out into the world and not just fall over, right? Like they have to practice riding a bike and their body will learn how to balance and they'll build their reaction times and like they'll learn how to ride a bike, but it just takes practice, right? Because we're talking about muscle memory. Emotional regulation works the same way, right? We have to practice calming down and staying regulated in moments of like slightly elevated stress over and over and over again to build that skill, right? So the activities that I'm gonna show you today are gonna to help with emotional awareness and diving into how, how do I think about anger and understand my anger? And they will not build, help your child build emotional regulation, right? But that's what Mightier is doing. Mightier is the practice piece. So if your child's playing Mightier, like that's where that is taken care of. That like, cause we're talking about changing automatic reactions to really intense emotions, right? So Mightier is taking care of that piece. Um, okay, so let's dive into, we just talked about like how there's a lot to understand around emotions. How do I understand anger? Where does it come from? What is it telling me? How do I talk about it? Um, what's its purpose? So the activities I'm going to share out after this um, have do all that through play. So you've probably, I, I think most of you probably have the volcano skill pack already. I'll send out the printable version just in case you don't have it. Um, and the activities in this pack, they normalize anger and promote emotional acceptance. So one big thing is like anger is often deemed as like the bad guy and it's not right. Like it has a purpose and like, we have good reason for feeling angry. It's like the intensity of the anger and like what anger can lead us to do that can become difficult and problematic. Right. But we want to be able to understand our anger and talk about our anger and like, accept like, yeah, I felt angry about that. Like I had a good reason for feeling angry about that. Right. So we want to normalize it, help kids normalize it. Um, encourage conversations about anger through play. It can be really hard for a lot of kids to talk about their emotions, especially anger. Um, so this, all the, like the games in here get like, kind of go about this in a goofy way. And the other thing here is they, the activities are going to prompt kids to think about the other emotions they feel alongside their anger. Um, so what are those uh, underlying emotions that are also packaged in with our feelings of anger? Um, this, if you have done a skill pack before, you know that like we wrap everything up in a metaphor. So the, the metaphor for this one is sort of like volcanoes and your you are a volcano scientist and you're studying volcanoes while you're, you know, you're studying anger really. And like what causes them with it? What gets volcanoes to form? What leads them to erupt, right? How do we understand that, right? But we're talking about anger. Um, there's a lavaling story, right? We want to make this relatable, normalize it. Our lavaling here is Joe. Joe is a really hard worker. He's a really passionate lobbling. He cares a lot about things, right? He's really driven. And when Joe gets disappointed, let down, like he, you know, he's worked really hard for something and it doesn't go the way he wanted it to, it to go, he can get angry, right? And like we can understand why, like, yeah, he worked really hard, right? So we're trying to like really bring like this strengths-based storytelling into how kids think about anger. Um, the other thing with the skill pack is there's a code in here. So your child can plug that into the Mightier app and um, get their little volcano outfit. Um, all right, and the main activity in this, you see this on the, the right here, is you're gonna build a volcano. Uh, like, you know, that's part, you'll have that, you'll cut it out, you'll build a volcano, and then you're gonna play a game with your child, putting like the different emotions that are anger related into the volcano and take turns picking them out and describing them in these really goofy ways. There are some like prompts that are like about how anger tastes or excuse me, about how whatever the, the emotion is, like how it tastes, how, what it feels like to touch it, like where it lives. Um, so kind of just like a goofy, funny way to like get us talking about these different emotions that are related to anger. Um, and I want you to do these with your child, right? Like you are learning with them. Like that's how you should approach it, right? You're learning with them. 
Um, because part of this is them seeing you model how to talk about emotions and model your own emotional awareness and your own emotional acceptance so that they can pick up on that. Um, so if you do this together, uh, it'll feel less, you know, it won't feel like they're being taught anything. It's like a game that you're doing together and just playing. The other main activity in this pack is anger animals. So what if anger were an animal? When you're angry, which animal are you most like? So if you just think about like, the description of what, you know, okay, how, how is a lion, why would a lion get angry? And like, how does a lion act when it's angry versus a mosquito versus a bull versus a clam versus a porcupine? Like, how would you think about yourself and your experience of anger and um, your expression of anger in, re in relation to an animal? So again, just like a goofy way to help kids talk about it and think about it and like under, think about their own expression of anger through this activity. And then the other one, this is from a different skill pack of ours. This is from the Ocean of Emotions skill pack, which is all about like just mixed and complicated emotional experiences in general. But this worksheet, um, I imagine a lot of people here are familiar with like the anger iceberg, which visually shows that like, okay, the emotion you might see above the surface is anger. And then there's, you know, 90% of the other emotions are under the surface, right? disappointment, embarrassment, frustration, shame, grief, loneliness, like what else is under the surface? So this is our own spin on that using sea creatures. Um, you can do this for any emotion. So this sheet has like sadness on it. It has like anxiousness on it. Um, but this is a way to help your child like attach the other emotions that they often feel alongside anger. Um, and you should, you should do this too as well with your child. So they can also especially with like naming emotions and depending on how, on how old your child is, um, they might not like, like how do, how do I understand what embarrassment is, right? Like things like that, they might just need to talk through. Um, okay, and then some key takeaways here. So all the things, so your child's playing mighty irregularly, they're working on emotional regulation, right? So that is working on those automatic reactions to intense emotions. That's taken care of there. The activities we just went through are things you do in calm moments, right? They are just games. They're things that like help, are gonna help your child like build emotional awareness, talk about their feelings, play around with that with you. But in the moment, like, okay, what do I do in the moment when my child is angry? How do I help them right now? So let's go back to what anger is about, where it comes from and what it's communicating to us. So first, is to think about like, what is my child's anger communicating, right? And try to respond to that message. So did they have their heart set on something and they got let down? Like did, were they expecting a certain outcome and it didn't play out that way, right? Like what is their anger really about? And let's respond to that rather than to just the anger, if that makes sense. And then number two, what other emotions is my child feeling right now, right? We know that anger is never just anger. Um, so let's help them name those, like, let's get to like, you know, it looks like anger, but really like they're really disappointed right now, or they're really overwhelmed right now, or they're feeling really embarrassed. Okay. So how do we manage, how do we deal with that? How do we see that emotion and help them see that emotion rather than focusing so much on the anger? And then how can I be their container? So this, I have a model emotional awareness and emotional acceptance in here that is, um, has a lot to do with like how you're going to go through the activities. But the big thing here is if you think about a time when your child's experiencing really intense emotions, right? Like they're kind of escalated and then you also get escalated, right? Because like that happens, we feed off one another. Things are usually not going to go well from here, right? Like usually we're both in this intense state and we're not going to be able to calm down from here, right? So this means as a, as parents, we need to model and exhibit our own emotional regulation skills to help our kids regulate, right? Like we need to be calm. We need to practice that. And that is hard. And that is really important also, right? Because they can use us to regulate. Co-regulation is a thing, right? So if we remain calm and we let our, ch our children match us in terms of regulation, like they will get there eventually, but we're going to have to help them get there. 
Um, let's get a question. Okay. And then the, um, this is where we end. I'm going to stop recording and then I will pay attention to questions. Um, if you have, um, you are welcome to also email me. I think a lot of these experiences are very personal. Um, so you're welcome to email me, uh, reach out. I love comments, uh, would encourage feedback. Um, and if you have requests for like, hey, please talk about this in the future. Please do a webinar on this topic in the future. Like, you know, you have an idea, um, something your child's struggling with. Please let me know. Um, so I'm going to just stop recording now. And I really appreciate everyone, everyone joining. And if you have questions, feel free to hang on um, and I'll get to those.